Hello students, welcome back. This is the 12th tutorial class on analog communication and this class will be presented by myself Dr. Shruti Mondal, Assistant Professor of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering from Jalpaiguri Government Engineering College. Okay, so come to the content of this class. Basically, uh, this is the last class on this analog communication and this class will be covered the different multiplexing technique like frequency division multiplexing time division multiplexing and after that we shall cover different kind of noise those has been uh, incorporated or uh, added in the channel uh, like uh, short noise partition noise flicker noise thermal noise okay uh, so let's start coming to the multiplexing as you already uh, familiar with the term multiplexing multiplexing means many into one so basically it is a process through which uh, we can send many message signal through a single channel for effective uh, transmission to, to increase the efficiency we need to transmit more number of signals uh, at a certain amount of time okay uh, so that is the multiplexing uh, now we can classify the multiplexing into two types one is uh, FDM the full form of FDM is the frequency division multiplexing and there is the TDM that is the time division multiplexing so let's see the uh, detailed process of the FDM and TDM so as the name suggests FDM uh, here basically uh, we are mainly focused with the uh, efficient bandwidth utilization so in case of frequency division multiplexing we can send multiple signal simultaneously uh, by modulating with different carrier frequency so that uh, for each of the signal or each of the message signal spectrum uh, those spectrum has been shifted at the different carrier frequency okay and the total bandwidth has been shared by all of these modulating signal okay so here you can see that suppose uh, this one is the f equal to zero and uh, a channel bandwidth is 10 megahertz okay now uh, if you are sending only one signal uh, and whose carrier frequency is suppose one megahertz uh, so we are not uh, utilizing the full bandwidth of the signal uh, of the channel okay so in that case we are, can send a multiple number of message signal but the different is that uh, we can modulate uh, with the with different carrier frequency okay as you already know that in case of dsb sc or am signal uh, modulation uh, if any signal is multiplied with the cos omega ct so here the total spectrum of the x3 will be shifted to that omega c plus minus omega c so by using that concept suppose here you can see that there are three type of signal uh, message one message two and message three and uh, for message one the respective spectrum is like triangular and uh, for the uh, message to the spectrum is trapezoidal and uh, for the message 3 the uh, respective spectrum is look like this now uh, without hampering the content of those message signal uh, we can uh, easily uh, modulate with D, uh, DSB modulated with different frequency like uh, suppose the first for the first message signal the carrier frequency is FC1 and whenever we modulate uh, modulate it with FC1 so obviously the spectrum will be shifted to the plus minus fc1 similarly for the mass second message signal uh, uh, the spectrum has been shifted to plus minus fc2 and for the message uh, 3 number message 3 uh, the uh, spectrum has been shifted to the plus minus fc3 so here you can see that three different baseband signal occupies uh, the different spectrum due to the modulation without overlapping with each other okay and this obviously this process uh, uh, is basically bandwidth efficient and it utilize the bandwidth maximally or optimally okay so that is the frequency division multiplexing that means with respect to spec frequency spectrum we are sending different kind of um, different message signal at the same time but those occupied uh, different spectrum or different frequency region of the spectrum okay so uh, how can we generate this kind of signal uh, so at the transmitter end so we need to use uh, basically three modulator and with uh, whose uh, carrier are different like this one is the message signal one message signal two and message signal three and product model one two and three and who oh, those uh, carrier are cos fc1 t cos fc2 uh, t and cos fc3 t respectively so obviously the output of this m1 t cos fc1 3 cos fc3 fc2 t and uh, m3 t into cos fc3 t and if, if those are passing through band pass filter one band pass filter two and band pass filter three like the dsb am generation 
and after that if you are using a uh, simple adder so what will we, we are getting we are getting simply a bdm and uh, then we can use antenna to transmit it okay so by using this simple structure we can uh, generate the fdm transmitter and the receiver and uh, it is quite uh, simple approach uh, so um, to uh, to differentiate with differentiate the um, spectrum of that uh, signal respective signal so we can use different uh, bandpass filter so for the bandpass filter one uh, it will uh, just separate out the respective spectrum we centered on fc1 and this bandpass filter two that will be separated out the uh, second spectrum from the uh, frequency uh, region and this one is uh, used to separate it out the third uh, spectrum from the frequency component okay so uh, then ob uh, obviously we can use any kind of demodulator like envelope detector or any synchronous modulation techniques uh, so so that we can extract original message signal m1 t m2 t m m3 t uh, respectively from them so this is the block diagram of fdm receiver and this is a very simple approach okay so at the receiver end the received and multiplex signal is passed through uh, three different bandpass filter with different center frequency and we get message signal after demodulation from them one by one okay so that is that's all from the fdm obviously uh, it ought to mention that uh, uh, it, it, it's it should be uh, remember that uh, no two spectrum should overlap with each other we should select the fc1 and fc2 such that 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 there is no overlap in between them so there, there should be some kind of guard band okay that means there is some uh, there's some kind of dif uh, frequency difference between two successive spectrum and that is known as guard band so you can see that this portion is basically guard band this portion cannot be utilized okay oh, okay and after after the guard band next spectrum can be used next uh, next uh, uh, yeah next uh, frequency comp region can be used next coming to the time division multiplexing so uh, in case of fdm we, we can send three different signal at the same time with, with using uh, three different carrier frequency okay but uh, in case of time division multiplexing the approach is quite different here uh, we can mul send multiple signal at uh, different time instant that means we can send multiple signal one by one serially over a channel and uh, they occupy basically uh, different time slot okay so we can, in earlier case of fdm uh, they occupy different frequency comp spectrum or frequency uh, component uh, or frequency region but here in case uh, in case of tdm time division multiplexing that means many signal are transmitted uh, over the channel uh, those occupy uh, different time slots okay so here different message signal are sent serially one by one okay but uh, here the main problem is that the process is not bandwidth efficient okay because as only one signal occupies a small uh, spectrum of the overall available bandwidth and rest of the bandwidth has been uh, wasted okay so time division multiplexing is not bandwidth efficient but the uh, here the process is quite simple we don't need to use different kind of modulator uh, we need to use uh, only one modulator at a one time uh, okay so following figure shows the uh, uh, time division uh, tdm waveform uh, so you can see that uh, we are here we are using two signal so a, a message one and message two so initially message one will be sent and after that message two will be sent then after that message one again and after that message two again so this one basically the time slot and um, the number of message like m12 and mt2 that make a one frame so in one frame two uh, number of message signal has been transmitted so you can see that this one is the original signal so in case of time division multiplexing at uh, so for suppose only this instant second message signal has been uh, transmitted and after that the first message signal has been transmitted and after that again second message signal has been transmitted then again um, um first message has been transmitted like this way so this way it will be continued so time tdm will be look like this way okay and it will it, it can you can see that basically uh, it, it is quite interesting to note down that uh, here the we are using some kind of pulse okay rectangular pulse here uh, okay which is quite similar to the carrier signal okay so working principle of tdm basically uh, <coughs> uh working with to the, the basically tdm multiplexer consists of uh, single pole rotating 
uh, switch that is basically the commutator okay now this switch can be mechanical or electrical switch uh, that rotate at the fs rotation per second and suppose that there are three input message signal are given to switch one two three so here you can see that one two three so it is quite simple approach so a message one message two and message three so if there is a switch in the uh, which is rotating at a certain speed uh, um, or, or uh, the speed is uh, already given here uh, at fs rotation per second okay so initially it will select m3 then m2 then m1 after like this so it will continue and after then it will pass through pulse amplitude modulation so basically pulse amplitude modulation is quite similar approach only the difference is that uh, the signal clear signal is uh, uh, the clock signal or rectangular pulse so that is the pam that's why you are using the term pam uh, so uh, you, are, you can uh, you can see the original the waveform so here you can see that the for a particular time instant we are sending so that's why uh, it is quite similar to the pulse signal so here we are using the pulse amplitude modulation where the carrier signal is pulse okay so uh, yeah it is that then uh, it is already mentioned that there are three input message signal are given to switch one two three the time period is shared uh, to this three input signal uh, contact time hence the three input waveforms sent over the channel at different time instants and the function of comm so the uh, function of the commutator uh, has been written as like this to take narrow sample for of each message at rotating uh, at fs but uh, which is much faster than fm obviously the frequency will be much faster than the um, frequency of the all the signals and the um, interval to subsequently interleave the end sample inside the interval so ts will be 1 by fs so this basically is also known as the time frame okay so and at the receiver there must be a commutator which must be synchronized with the transmitter side and commutator to select the right signal at the right time it is called the frame synchronization the tdm transmitter and the receiver signal is also showing in the following way okay so you can see that after pam it will be going to the channel and after demodul uh, it will come to the pam demodulator and again we need to use another commutator so you should remember that the commutator at the transmitter and receiver both can both should be synchronized and after that uh, we are again we are we can use the different low pass filters to select different message signal uh, from the respective out as the respective output now let's calculate the signaling rate so in case of signaling uh, you can see that suppose we are sending three signal so this one is the message signal one message signal two message signal three okay so this this one basically uh, this is the one tdm time frame from here to here so this one is the total time frame okay so yeah here uh, n equal to 3 so time frame equal to ts by 1 by 1 by fs so the pulse spacing is ts by n as we are assuming that there are n number of pulse here we are using uh, assuming the n equal to 3 so pulse spacing is ts by n so it is nothing but 1 by n fs so the number of pulse per second so now that is nothing but n into fs okay so basically this is the nyquist criteria or uh, no nyquist criteria where it is mentioned mentioning that the sampling frequency should be greater than or equal to um, twice of the original message signal okay so the details about this nyquist criteria will be discussed in the upcoming classes of digital communication but you just remember that the sampling uh, sampling frequency that means the speed of the respective commutator so um, that is the fs okay so that should be greater than or equal to 2 fm okay so the signaling rate it is defined as uh, the minimum number of pulse that are passed uh, per second so r greater than or equal to 2 nfm and uh, similarly the that means r2 fs sorry yes two nfm yeah you can write that number of pulse per second is nfs so if it's as greater than or equal to 2 fm so obviously the signaling rate should be 2 nfm fm and message uh, the required bandwidth can be uh, calculated by using r by 2 so that is n into fm so by using this formula we can calculate the different uh, quantity like um, mass uh, minimum bandwidth for the tdm uh, signaling rate for the tdm like this okay now coming to the another important term that is the frame synchronization suppose we are sending uh, three different message signal now how can we uh, how can a receiver can understand which one is the message signal one which one is the message signal two so that uh, proper uh, filtration can be uh, taken out okay 
so for uh, so for that purpose we, we need to use the frame synchronization so what is frame synchronization basically in case of frame synchronization of tdm a separate pulse uh, uh, whose amplitude is quite larger than the other amplitude and uh, basically these are not the message signal but it is the known as the, the marker pulse so uh, it is already sending along with the um, others um, message signal okay so it, it has been you it is called also as the marker pulse why because it, it indicate that uh, after this which uh, message signal has has to be received that means suppose we are getting marker pulse here okay so if we are getting marker pulse here it should be uh, concluded that after that the next message should be m1 or x1 okay so that when marker pulse is received at the receiver end, we can conclude that the next upcoming pulse is x1 t okay so that is the frame synchronization and the use of marker pulse for the frame synchronization purpose okay so that that's all from that uh, multiplexing uh, time dv tdm and fdm next uh, topic is the noise uh, so what is the noise noise is basically the unwanted form of energy uh, which tends to interfere with the proper reception okay so um, whenever we are sending uh, signal over the channel there are uh, there are lots of unwanted signal can be incorporated into the original message sig original signal so which we, which will try to interfere with the um, original signal okay so th that is nothing but the noise so basically it is the unwanted form of energy now there are two types of noise uh, are mainly found those are called as the external noise and other is the internal noise so external noise as the name suggests uh, this kind of noise are generated basically in the external environment uh, to a communication system and uh, it cannot be uh, it should be remembered that external noise cannot be analyzed quantitatively or can, cannot analyzed me or me measured quantitatively and it cannot be controlled okay and to reduce this kind of uh, noise uh, the communication should be uh, shifted into suitable place okay uh, let's uh, discuss about the different kinds of noise like first of all the atmospheric noise okay so uh, first external noise is the atmospheric noise so it is produced uh, due to the uh, lightning discharge uh, in the thunderstorm and others electrical disturbance in the atmosphere okay so basically atmospheric noise this uh, this sparking or this lightning is the random random and static in nature okay and it's content spurious radio signal over the complete radio spectrum okay so that's why uh, whenever we are listening some fm or am during the lighting the sound quality uh, become different okay <coughs> some noise has been uh, heard during this uh, lightning so that is the atmospheric noise and uh, it should be remembered the field strength of the noise is inversely vary with the frequency okay so uh, here large atmospheric noise is observed in low and medium frequency band whereas small atmospheric noise are observed in very high frequency or uhf band okay so that's all from the atmospheric noise and next one is the extra uh, extraterrestrial noise so the, basically uh, this type of noise are coming out of the earth and uh, it can be also classified into two types one is the solar noise and another is the cosmic noise so solar noise as the name suggests it generated due to the electrical noise emitting from the sun or uh, solar radiation we can call it also as the solar radiation so uh, during the fission fusion process in the so uh, sun the regular radiation occurred from the sun okay uh, from the from its core uh, uh, and it's uh, where the um, there is very high temperature and it radiates electrical energy in the form of noise okay and it can be observed that uh, uh, in the uh, 11th years of interval uh, electrical disturbance are caused okay so that is the solar noise and uh, next is the cosmic noise uh, so noise uh, this kind of noise are basically coming from the distant star or galaxy and the cosmic noise is disturbed almost uniformly over the entire sky and obviously uh, this co this cosmic noise is very are dominant at very low frequency range okay now coming to the next part that is the industrial uh, other uh, industrial noise which is another kind of external noise so as the name suggests industrial noise basically uh, this these noise are man made noise and these are produced due to the like 
मूवमेंट ऑफ ऑटोमोबाइल्स एयरक्राफ्ट इग्निशन इलेक्ट्रिकल मोटर स्विचिंग गियर्स एंड लीकेज फ्रॉम हाई वोल्टेज ट्रांसमिशन लाइन फ्लोरेशन लाइट हेवी इलेक्ट्रिकल इक्विपमेंट ओके सो दिस आर द बेसिकल इंडस्ट्रियल नॉइज एंड द फ्रिक्वेंसी रेंज ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑफ नॉइज इज बेसिकली वन मेगा हार्ज टू सिक्स हंड्रेड मेगा हार्ज ओके सो दिस आर द ऑल द एक्सटर्नल नॉइज एंड अगेन आई एम टेलिंग दैट एक्सटर्नल नॉइज कैन नॉट बी कंट्रोल्ड एंड टू मिनिमाइज दिस काइंड ऑफ नॉइज द सिस्टम शुड बी प्लेस्ड इन द सेफर प्लेस ओके सो दैट वी कैन रिड्यूस दिस काइंड ऑफ नॉइज दैट्स ऑल फ्रॉम द एक्सटर्नल नॉइज एंड कमिंग टू द इंटरनल नॉइज uh internal noise is generated uh, internally of a communication system inside the device okay so and uh, it should be remembered that uh, this kind of noise is uh, randomly distributed over the entire frequency spectrum okay so we can classify internal noise into five types so first one is the short noise uh, so what is short noise uh, short noise is generated due to the random behavior of the charge carrier so if you are uh, dealing with the electrical tube so short noise can be generated due to the random emission of electrical electrons from the cathode whereas if you are dealing with the semiconductor device like diode or transistor and uh, so in that case short, no short noise generated due to the simple random gen generation and recombination of electrical electrical hole pair okay so during the generation and recombination of each pair uh some kind of noise has been generated that is known as the short noise okay so following figure shows the short noise where the short noise current uh, uh that is fluctuate uh okay uh, about a mean value i0 so where total current that is i it that is the that is vary uh, with respect to its mean value i i0 so it is equal to i0 plus int okay now coming to the partition noise Uh, as the name suggests partition so in the uh, semiconductor device where there is a partition like diode uh, where there is a junction to there there is one junction in case of transistor there is two junction so uh, uh, this type of noise generated in the circuit where there uh, where a current has to divide it between two or more path so partition noise result from a random fluctuation in this division okay or in this partition so uh, uh, the now uh, as there uh, it depend on the number of partition that means when the part number of partition has been increased the noise has been increased so for that purpose we can easily say that uh, the diode is less noisy than the transistor okay next coming to the uh, next noise that is the flicker noise uh, at low frequency flicker noise occurs due to the fluctuation in the current density which in turn change the conductivity of the material okay and this produces the fluctuating voltage drop when direct current flows it has been observed that the flicker noise is varied inversely proportional to the respective frequency okay now come to the transmits uh, transmit time noise so at high frequency so flicker noise is very dominant at the lower frequency and transit time noise has been dominant at the higher frequency so at high frequency transit time noise uh, uh, observed so what is transit time no noise so when a transit time of a charge carrier crossing a junction is comparable with the time period of the signal so some carrier diffuses back to the source which change the conductance of the overall material and creates a transit time noise so it's remember that uh, it can be observed at the high frequency okay during high frequency the time period is very low okay so obviously at at that time transit time of the charge carrier crossing a junction is comparable with the time period of the original signal so in that scenario oh, the noise has been generated that is known as the transit time noise now coming to the another important noise most important noise that is known as the thermal noise so what is the thermal noise basically it is generated in a resistor or resistive component of a complex impedance due to the rapid and random motion of electrons or atoms okay so thermal noise thermal noise basically due to the uh, uh, we already know that um, uh, in normal temperature electron or holes have Uh, are excited due to its thermal energy now the, the, due to this thermal energy the electrons are moving uh, inside the device in random manner okay so this is basically known as a thermal motion okay and uh, due to this uh, the noise has been produced this is known as the thermal noise okay according to the theory of the thermodynamics the temperature of particle denotes its kinetic energy okay so therefore the temperature of the body express the rms value of the velocity of the motion of the particle of the body okay so as the temperature will be increased that means kinetic energy will be increased that means uh, respective uh, movement of the electrons will be increased and respective noise will also increased okay and uh, this is basically the thermal noise so thermal noise is generated due to the random motion of the electron holes electron hole pair okay and which is 
normally occur due to the thermal energy or excitation of the electrons at the normal room temperature. So this cannot be removed easily. And uh, thermal noise is also known as the white noise or Gaussian noise. Uh, in case of thermal noise, the noise power is generally proportional to the temperature as you already know and it is also uh, proportional to the bandwidth of the uh, over which noise is measured. So the noise power has been expressed in term of um, Pn proportional to T into B and Pn equal to K into T into B where K is the Boltzmann constant. Okay. So thermal noise is present in all spectrum of the RF. Okay. So that's why with the term the white light, uh, uh, white noise white light consists of all color frequency similarly thermal noise consists of all frequency component so uh, that's why we use the term white noise white noise contains all frequency in the same banner so the power spectral density for the uh, thermal noise or the white noise or the gaussian noise has been showing uh, like this way that phd is uh, independent of the constant frequency that means it is constant okay so he, he, here this one is the phd of white noise where you can see that that amplitude uh, or, or the power is constant whose value is n0 by 2 okay so it is the independent it is independent of the frequency it should remember white noise or um, thermal noise or the joy johnson noise uh, all are the same and both are all are the independent of the respective frequency but you can see that you know transit time noise is dominant at the high frequency uh, flicker noise has been dominant in the lower frequency but thermal noise has been in dominant in throughout the um, frequency region okay now let's see the a voltage model of a noise register uh, so uh, let's consider the vn is the rms no noise voltage so here you can see that this one is a vn who is generated the noise and its noise power can be measured at pn equal to v square by rl so where v, v is the voltage across it and r is the internal resistance and as per the maximum power transfer theorem we know that if the r equal to rl that means maximum power will be delivered so pn will be v square by r also okay now if the r equal to rl so obviously the total power will be divided so applying the voltage divided rule v will be vn by 2 okay so by just uh, su substituting this value v equal to vn by 2 so pn will be vn square by 4 r as we already know that the for the thermal noise the value of pn will be ktv so just we are putting here ktb equal to vn square by 4 r so vn will be root over 4 r into k into t into b okay so you can see that the voltage the rms uh, voltage model of noise resi uh, noise resistor where the no noise voltage is proportional to the or uh, equal to the uh, root over 4 r k into t into b okay so that is the uh, this is the noise voltage thermal noise voltage and it should be remembered that Vn is independent of the frequency and that is the property of the thermal noise okay so that's all so what we have started we have started different multiplexing technique uh, FDM and TDM in case of FDM uh, it is uh, basically the bandwidth utilize, bandwidth efficient process we are using uh, different frequency spectrum of a frequency region whereas in case of TDM we are sending different message signal at the different time instance and uh, both have some advantage and disadvantage and uh, then we are studying the different kind of noise like short noise partition noise clicker noise thermal noise okay so that those are the internal noise and uh, apart from it we are also uh, study some kind of external noise like atmospheric noise solar noise cosmic noise and the industrial noise okay so, so these are the reference thank you if you have any problem please post them I will be happy to answer them.